This used to be the splitter on my Mazda race car. Years of track abuse, curbs and scraping over every bit of tarmac. It's worn itself thin, beaten down, and let's be honest, its aerodynamic value is really diminished. The front edge of this splitter has worn away to a knife's edge. The 3D printed splitter tunnels have been replaced multiple times already, and even so, they're still completely cracked and broken. And the mounting points, which I've already removed, they'd collided with so many curbs around here in Australia that, well, they were discarded because they were completely unusable. So it's time for an upgrade. Stronger, smoother, more aerodynamic and built right here in this shed using materials that aren't exclusively held for the Formula 1 elite types. So this old design wasn't terrible. A single sheet of plywood, it was simple with mounting points, but it was thin and it flexed under load. That flex meant inconsistent aero. The mounting points were aluminium. They'd cracked and been damaged. I'd re-welded them multiple times, but by the end of it, this thing was done. So the goal for Splitter version two was to make something that was thicker, stronger, and that could put up with my abusive driving, AKA curb launching. Here's what I built. The first step was to draw out rough measurements of the plan shape. I took the old splitter as reference and made this one very similar in size, although this is a slightly more refined shape. I then got to work with multiple layers of plywood glued and screwed together, a plywood lasagna. The idea was simple, thickness equals strength and the layering helps keep it rigid and stable. Yes, there is a weight trade-off with more thickness, and yes, I'd be much happier if it was lighter and made with some fancy carbon-wrapped foam board type solution, but that'd cost more and I'd fear damaging it at its first track day. Ply is just way less painful emotionally. At least with the ply, it's a bit more disposable and it's pretty hard wearing. The benefits of multiple layers glued is, firstly, I could use one big sheet cut it into sections and then glue them together to be a more efficient use of my materials. See a splitter this large leaves a lot of spare out of the single 1200 by 2400 size sheet. Splitters can be pretty awkwardly shaped. And secondly, I was able to build in curved sections into the splitter using thinner sheets of ply, getting them into a flexed state and using glue and screws to make those curves permanent. Once the shape was done, everything was coated with some white oil-based paint. I chose a white oil-based because it's reasonably weatherproof, it was easy to get, and it's kind of like Ford Model T where you can have any color you want as long as it's black, in this case, white. Now this isn't just a flat board you stick to the car. You kind of need to brace it and you need to mount it. So let me get it off and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I will admit that is made a little bit more difficult by the car being on the trailer with a spare tire right in front of it. I wouldn't normally make it that awkward. So firstly are these two protrusions at the back of the splitter. They extend into brackets that are bolted under the motor up to the subframe. They don't really support a whole lot of high load, they're mostly there just to keep things aligned and in place. The primary steel mounts are in two sections and they are the main quick connect component. On the car, these are steel uprights with solid 20 millimeter bar and they are tapered at the front to make it easier to slide onto. And then onto the splitter itself, I had these square bits of tube lying around in my tub of scraps that I used and they serve as the receptacle to slide onto those, um, those pointy bits on the car. And then finally, of course, to stop the extremities from flexing excessively, especially at high speed, I added the steel support wires that you may have seen earlier that, that run up behind the bumper bar. That way, under load, the splitter stays flat instead of plowing into the road. There's also this aluminium box tube. I cut and welded it to kind of match the curve of the front bumper. This adds some rigidity, keeps things all nice and, I don't know, squared up. And it also serves as an edge, front edge for the front plastic air dam. This is a bit of garden trim that sits between the bumper and the splitter. There's sort of a, I don't know, whatever that is, two or three or four inch gap between them. And that's filled with that plastic trim. It's the same trim I used to use on the old splitter, just reused it here. There's also some horizontal bracing across the top there that keeps the entire splitter from being quite, uh, to be quite stiff and stops it sort of flexing, particularly at the extremities here, which of course are supported by the steel wires, but that, um, 
C section of alloy extrusion is really, uh, really quite stiff for the, for the weight. It's very lightweight. The wires are mounted into some steel receptacles here. It's just some sort of bracket I made up that is uh, through the splitter and it, it's bolted in from underneath. Likewise, there's actually steel cables up inside the bumper here towards uh, the sort of just the front side of the wheel. The splitters for the front section mount in through holes in the bumper. And so there's the steel cable there and those bumper, those cables are bolted into the mounts up underneath the calf where the, um, the tow hook would normally mount. On the underside to potentially protect the splitter somewhat from scraping, you can see that hasn't worked exactly yet, but I've made these little splitter pucks. Uh, I designed them and 3D printed them with the goal that I'd possibly get them machined out of something more robust. But for now, I'm just gonna use the plastic ones and see how they fare. They, um, they're just mounted with some screws, so pretty easy to replace if one of them gets damaged. Meanwhile, on the sides, I reused my old splitter side sections, just screwed them into the ply with a couple of screws, nothing too difficult there. And you can see the difference in the curve between the flat section and this curved section. There's about a 40 millimeter difference in gap here. So it's not a huge angle or a huge radius um, because I had to flex plywood here, so you can only go so far, but that is at least what something, and that is what I have achieved in this case. So the finished product, a splitter that's thicker, stiffer and smoother underneath in terms of aerodynamic airflow. It's a big step up from the old one. It should actually handle 200 kilometers an hour at turn one at Phillip Island and hopefully it won't flex and drag its way into the tarmac anymore. Plus it kind of looks right. Almost tough, perhaps like it belongs on a real race car, which maybe that's a dangerous thing because then people are going to expect me to actually be a real racing driver and I'm just some dude. The other big upside is that hopefully, in theory, it's more aerodynamically effective. It's got a smooth underside. We've got the sort of curved up ends, which should make for a wing-like effect. The leading edge has been radiused or curved with the top edge being quite sharp. So that should mean that airflow should be more efficient. And look at me talking like I know anything about aerodynamics. I'm just a complete amateur. The real test, of course, will be how it performs on track. Does it add grip? Can it endure the inevitable curb bounces? And will it improve my lap times? I guess that's the one that really matters. To be honest, I'm just happy if it hangs on and it hangs around for a few years without disintegrating, falling apart or something like that. Anything more than that is just a bonus. Anyway, I did actually get it out for one initial test and to be honest, it didn't go perfectly. In fact, the steel cables that support the most forward extremities, they failed, completely catastrophically failed. As I head around turn one, I don't initially notice the issue, but then as we start to get up to speed, there goes the splitter. Thankfully, the splitter body itself is mostly okay. I had crimped them and I'd used smaller wire than I had done previously and the wire completely snapped. So thankfully there was no other significant damage. I was able to get the car home, repair those cables, use bigger, thicker stuff like I'd used before and she's back together ready for the next test. This time much better. The splitter held itself together and we set some lap times. I was equal parts relieved and impressed. So that's the new splitter. Nothing exotic, just plywood, glue, screws, paint, steel, aluminium, and some DIY guesswork. If you've ever built or destroyed a splitter like this, or maybe this idea gives you some inspiration for your build, please let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear what you've done for your car. And if I could do mine better, please let me know. Of course, if you want to see how this one performs at the track, I'm going to be doing lots of PB chasing curbs, smashing videos coming very soon. You know what to do. See ya.